to our sixth Java tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be working with loops, while loops, for loops, do while loops, enhanced for loops, and also continue and break statements. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna basically use the loops to iterate or go through a specified list or an array of integers or strings. Uh, for the while loop, we're going to go ahead and actually... Actually, I don't think I'm going to use an array in the beginning for now, because j just so you can understand the loop better itself, and what exactly happens in the loop. So, first we're going to use a while loop. So, basically how the while loop works is you put while, and within uh, this, uh, what you have to feed to the loop is a... condition. For example, while the sky is blue, do this. You know, obviously we don't do that here, but, or while i is less than a specific number, i being any variable here, so a, a very a integer variable. So while i is less than uh, 5, we're going to go ahead and actually print system.out.print line i. So we're going to print what i is at this point. So we're going to go ahead and we have to declare i. Int i equals zero. So when I start the loop, and then I have to also increment the i. So now when I run it, it's going to actually print up to four. So first it prints zero, then it prints one, then two, then three, then four. So what happens is it keeps on incrementing the i, and while i is less than 5, it's going to print the i out. But as soon as i becomes 4, is as soon as i becomes 5, we don't see the 5 here. Because when the i is 5, it doesn't go inside the loop. Because the condition is if i is less than 5. But if we put here i is less than or equal to 5, then it's definitely going to print it. So it prints up to 5. So it goes 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, and then the loop breaks. Because uh, basically when, once the i becomes 5, it continues, then, it, then the i becomes 6, and the loop breaks. So that's pretty much it for the while loop, actually. It's quite simple. You put while, the condition as to uh, for how long you want it to continue, and whatever you want to do in the while loop goes here. And of course, you don't have to print the i. You can do whatever you want in the while loop. Um, so let's go ahead and let's use a for loop now. So actually before we use the for loop, let's do a do while loop. How a do while loop works is, let me uh, bring this back. So we have int i0. So we're going to go ahead and instead of putting while here, we're going to do do. And then down here, we're going to put while the condition, while i is less than zero. Now there's a reason why I'm putting zero here is to basically show you the difference between a do while loop and a while loop. With a do while loop you're gonna run the code within the loop at least once whether the condition is met or not. So for example in a regular while loop if I did this over here it wouldn't print anything but with a do while loop it's gonna print at least once. There we go. So it prints 0 at least once. Because i is 0, it prints, but then i becomes... Uh, it doesn't matter what i becomes, because it, the condition is while i is less than 0. So even when i is not less than 0, it still prints this. So that's the difference between a while and a do while. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually introduce the for loop. With the for loop, you declare everything within it. You don't have to, but uh, that's initially how it's done. So we have three conditions that we need to actually put within here. The first condition is uh, what you're going to be incrementing. So we have an integer of i equal to 0. And while that i is less than or equal to 5, we're going to do i++ plus plus here. So the, uh, over here we have the declaration the condition, and the incrementation. 
So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did with the while loop here, system.out.println.i. So it's going to print the value of i, and should print up to 5, same as before in the while loop. There we go, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, it doesn't print the new line because I didn't put line here, but if I do that, it's the same thing. There. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, that's pretty much it for the for loop. Uh, now we're going to look at the enhanced for loop. For that, I'm going to need to introduce an array. Uh, we'll use an integer array. I'll discuss this in a different uh, tutorial more. But for now, you can just think of it as a, a list of numbers. That's basically what it is, but it's an array of numbers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? And now if I uh, use an enhanced for loop, you do the same thing. You put a 4. You declare an integer, because we're going to be printing integers. And then you put the name of the array here. So what this does is, i becomes the value of uh, the value of the values in array. So basically, first i becomes one, then two, then three, then four, then five. It takes on each value as it iterates through the uh, array. So if I do here system dot out dot print line, and I put i here, it's going to do the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing. There. So I did run it here. Let me run it one more time. There. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So if I put here, instead of an array of integers, I put string. And I uh, make a string array. And I'll put some different strings in here, like apple, monkey. Oh, why did I do that? Let's put monkey. Monkey, okay, whatever. Uh, let's put blue, and let's put one more in here. One more, okay, whatever. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this again. Now it's going to, like I said, i takes the value of a, but right now i is an integer, so it's not going to work. So you have to put string here. So i, which is of type string, takes on each value in a as it iterates through the array. Let's run it. There we go. Apple, monkey, blue, and one more the four string values that I have here. So that's how a enhanced for loop works. Now let's talk about continue and break. Uh, first I'll introduce the break statement. So we're going to go ahead and put an if statement here. If i is equal to the string blue, we're going to actually just break from the loop. What break does it, it just exits the loop completely, which means it's not going to print anything, uh, uh, including blue or after blue. So if we run this, it's going to print apple and Anki. So only the first two elements of the array. Now if we if I put continue here instead of break, what continue is going to do is actually skip over blue. So it'll be apple, Anki, and one more. It'll skip blue. That's what continue does. So continue basically sees continue, then it skips everything ahead here, and it just goes back to the loop and gives i the next value, which is one more. So let's run this here. There we go. Apple, Anki, and one more. Um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm sorry it was a little bit quicker. I just wanted to make sure I don't go over the time. Um, sorry if I made any mistakes in here. I don't think I did, though. Everything seems fine. But this is basically how the for loop works, the while loop, the do while, enhanced loop, continue and break statements. Of course, if you have any questions or uh, specific uh, uh, request for some uh, certain type of tutorial video, please let me know. I'd be happy to make one for you. Um, and thank you so much for watching.